What's up guys and welcome back to another episode of Career Mode, this is episode number 82 and we start today's episode off with Transfer Deadline Day or as you can see Brentford have just signed Declan Rice from Villarreal for £78.6 million. We're rebuilding at the San Siro, Brentford are doing the same in the Community Stadium and more on them later, I'm going to show you their team, it's really interesting but as Deadline Day would arrive, as you know £43 million in the budget, we've had a crazy Crazy summer window, spending almost four hundred million pounds on fifteen new players. However, the one issue we still got is two of our staff players are out of contract at the end of the season. And we just can't seem to sell them. We had one bid for Yuri Tielemans, the Belgian, 29 years old. And Spurs, of course, walked out the door where we tried to ask for £75 million. As for Leon Goretzka, he's been on the transfer list since day one of the summer window. I said to the German, I know you're a serial winner. I know your body transformation has been unbelievable as well. But at the end of the day, I'd much rather your salary off the books and at 31 years old to look for someone younger for the future as we rebuild build here. But no one wants him. Nobody wants Leon Goretzka, the former Schalke and Bayern man, and I cannot understand why. David Moyes wasn't interested in either him or Yuri Tielemans, so I said forget it. As much as I want Ravella, at the end of the day, I just can't afford the price you're going to be asking for without the swap deal. Wolves didn't want Leon Goretzka when I was going for the Luka Modric regen. Bruno Lage says no, I'm not interested. So again, we can't afford a flat fee because 43 mil isn't enough for a player that quality. So I said to Valencia, Nicola Laws and Leola, 20 seven years old. I said, do you want Leon Goretzka? This guy's a serial winner. He's won so much in German football. They said no as well. And I was just sitting there thinking, what, what's wrong with Leon Goretzka? I mean, don't get me wrong. Obviously, I am rebuilding. If I wasn't rebuilding, I'd more than gladly have him as part of my team and a key member here as well. But not a single club in world football wanted Leon Goretzka, and I literally could not understand why. Fiorentina were the same, I was open for Lorenzo Pellegrini, I know he's only a year younger than Goretzka, but as he is Italian, I've been trying to assemble a, a bit of an Italian core here, I thought that might not be a bad swap deal. Fiorentina wanted too much for Pellegrini on its own, so I thought, forget it, that deal's not going to come off as well, so it was a really frustrating transfer deadline day. The only way I could raise more money was by selling Goretzka or Tielemans, the bids simply weren't coming in, and when I was swapping out, or trying to swap out Leon, not a single club wanted him. I said to Dean Smith at Aston Villa, do you want Goretzka? What a leader he'd be at Villa Park. The answer was no. But I said to Dean for Skamaka, he is a player I do want to be fair. They were willing to negotiate without Leon Goretzka and in the end, for just half a million over the market valuation at £40 million. That was the fee we negotiated. And to be fair, it turned out to be a blessing in disguise that they didn't want Leon Goretzka because in the end, this was a really good deal. Five-year contract, 90 grand a week. It's a relatively pricey weekly wage. It's a slight wage decrease, but even so, giant Lucas Gamaka is returning to his native Italy. And the former Sassuolo striker is now here at the San Siro. 27 years old, he's in the prime of his career right now. What I really like about him as well is that he's a different option. It's very rare that nowadays I'll play with a really physically strong and tall target man but at 6 foot 5 with 89 attacking positioning with 93 strength as well I do wish the aggression was higher for a target man but even so he looks like a really different option and you saw in the first two games um, with uh, Atalanta and Udinese, Roberto Gutierrez was sort of like playing players in they're not looking to be the out and out goal scorer. If that's how we're going to have to operate in the Serie A with such tough defence, then I might need a player like that that can hold the ball up and bring other players into play. So Skamaka is in, he'll be our bench striker, and I'm very happy with the fear, just 40 mil. Regardless, we had a big bid for Yuri Tielemans, Real Madrid for £67.8 million, pounds, and in the end, I turned it down, and you might be wondering why, and I showed you it there. It's because I, like an idiot, totally messed up the negotiations with all of the CMs I was interested in as replacements for Leon and for Yuri as well. So I couldn't negotiate for Ravella or Lovrich until another week, and by then the trans window shut. So because of that, I thought, if I can't get a replacement for Tielemans, I might as well keep him. So in the end, I did a U-turn, and I said to Yuri, I said to Leon, okay, look, your futures are uncertain here. Yuri's 29, Leon's 31. And at the start of the season, the board said, you know, look for younger players, look to assemble Italian core, but also bring in a couple of leaders. We haven't bought in any experienced players here with AC Milan, but I thought we've got two leaders here already. 
Yuri Tielemans and Leon Goretzka. The Belgian, absolutely brilliant. Same with Leon as well, the German midfielder. And of course, as we know, this guy is a real winner. So in the end, I said, okay, look, if no one's going to put bids in for Leon Goretzka, you know, Yuri Tielemans as well. I've messed that up myself. As Neymar goes to Wolves, what's going on in season six? Look, man's left to Atalanta. This is crazy. But yeah, so Yuri Tielemans and Leon Goretzka will stay. They'll be the leaders this season. Where whether they're here for a year after next, I highly doubt it. I think this will be their final season with the club, but just to, you know, put an end to the uncertainty of their futures here at the San Siro, to be here as dressing room leaders and still with the quality they've got, 87 and 88 overall, I think it was the right thing to do. So deadline day ends and I've got to show you Brentford's team, man. I've got to show you what's been going on here. As you'll see, there's a few players that have left. Ray and Bale are still there, but Harry Maguire has gone to West London at 86 overall, 33 years old. You see Tawanza and Pratt have obviously left. Um, looking on the midfielders, thankfully Josh De Silva is still there. I'm buzzing about that. Hope he retires there as a B. Jesse Lingard still there at 33 years old. We saw a moment ago there, as we know, Declan Rice is now a Brentford player. I love that signing for the Bees as well. Declan Rice and Harry Maguire, two English players coming in as they continue to feel the English core. But Hozek has come in to replace Adam Ola Lookman and also Roberto Gutierrez as well. But you might be thinking, hang on a minute, where's Ivan Tony? Where's Ivan Tony? You can't tell me he's left Brentford. Has Ivan Tony gone? Well, I quickly had a search and I said, where has Ivan Tony left to? Oh my God, it's Manchester City. Can you believe it? Pep Guardiola said, I don't want Holland. I don't want Harry Kane. I want the shocker. 30 years old, 87 overall, two golden boots in three seasons, and Ivan Tony leaves West London to the northwest of England and goes to the Etihad Stadium. It was between Rayo Vallecano and Manchester City. I think he made the better decision for him personally. Oh my goodness, what a window though for AC Milan. Look at the departures here. Most of the players we sold for around 350 million were players that were in their late 20s or in their 30s. Campos being an exception of 24, but when you look at the signings that came in, again, I think it was 15 or possibly 16 new signings, but when you look at the age of the players that came in, that's the most important thing. Most of the players we got are either in the early 20s or in the teens. The exceptions really are Sandro Tonali, Lovato, and Pizarri at 26 years old. Oh, and Moise Keen as well. Um, as well but no one over the age of 26. We really look to make this team younger. I talked about it. This team was on the brink of collapse with so many players their deals up at the end of last season that we decided to release on free transfers and also players their deals come at the end of this season as well. And there's still quite a few of them in this team right now. I, I have to say I'm happy with how this AC Milan side is looking. It is a five-star team. It is still a five-star team, but it's still a team that is forming its identity and it will need to gel. It's undergone a major transition in this summer transfer window. But it just looks a lot more exciting, doesn't it? We're starting to form an identity. It's looking like a really cool AC Milan side. And again, whilst I have plans to sell Tilly Mans and Goretzka, it might prove to be a blessing in disguise. Yuri and Leon, 87 and 88 overall. They've got brilliant first team quality and two fantastic midfielders as well. And as leaders, as vets in this side as well, for all the young talent here. I've got to say, I kind of like it as well because you might notice as Moyes gets his first goal of the season 12 minutes in in our first and only game today against Salernitana. Um, yeah, you, you might have noticed it. We've, we've obviously got a couple of young Belgians here. You know, obviously Timmermans, the, uh, the kid we bought in at centre forward. I like the idea of Yuri Tiedemann's mentoring him. And also as well, in terms of German players we've got, obviously Leon Goretzka can mentor Arnie Meyer, who is a new gen slash regen 81 rated midfielder, who's also really young as well. So I, I, I quite like it, to be fair. You know, senior players mentoring younger players that have the same nationality. I, I actually think it worked out pretty well in the end. Still, yeah, first and only game on today's episode it was indeed Salernitana heading into the game take Leo lead through Moise Keane of course starting left wing in this team this season getting his first of the season and after Santos went down worrying signs there Francisco bought in for 45 mil would be forced off and 54 minutes into the game ah oh, it's a really lucky goal but we will take yeah first at the San Siro for our number nine and new club captain. Roberto Gutierrez off the mark. Really lucky goal. We're going to take it as we go. Two goals up here on the side. Who started the season off bottom of the table. And 72 minutes in. Looking for back-to-back -back wins of the San Siro. And our second in our first three. Yuri Tielemans going on the run. Off to Callum Hudson-Odoi. And it's two in three 
for Hudson Odoi as well. I talked about it in the last episode. I really like this guy as a winger. I've got no plans to sell him whatsoever, being the only English player in the team alongside myself as manager. I quite like that feel. Hudson Odoi, two in three to start the season off. Really good start for our number 10. So 3 0, job was done. Points are in the bag at this point. It was just a case of how many more goals we could get. 12 minutes to go. Great offload by Gutierrez and Hudson Odoi playing a 1 2. Cannon down the right. Look at this as well. We've got five AC Milan players storming forward, looking to get another goal. And in the end, it's a brace for Roberto. Three goals in his opening three games for our new captain. Going for the Serie A golden boot in season one to San Siro. Well, that's not a bad way to start off. Two here in Milan, one in Atalanta. And a big 4-0 victory as we crush Salernitana for our second win of the season in our opening three games. I think we'll score a lot of goals this season. I certainly hope so. We've got an amazing front four. Hudson Odoi on the right. Moyes on the left, and then Timmerman supporting Gutierrez up top as well. Last season, we scored over 100 goals with Brentford. I'd like to do the same with AC Milan. The only negative is, on defence, Francisco Santos did sprain his knee. He's done for four weeks. So a tough start for Santos since coming in from Brentford. And that does give me some cause for concern. We've only got four official centre-halves here, and one of them was trained to play centre-half over the summer. So Lovato will come in, Castaneda will come on the bench, but we might possibly possibly have some cause for concern if we get another injury in the centre-back role. An injury crisis is not what we want to start our new season off with AC Milan. But that will end today's episode of Korea Mode, guys. Massive thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the channel, please drop a like. Much love to you all. Have a fantastic day and I'll see you for the next episode. Our first ever European game against Newcastle United and also Juve and Roma as well. I'll see you for it very soon.